the ESPN Daily. Good morning. Choose your NBA bubble fighter, Damian Lillard or Devin Booker. I'm a vocal book supporter myself, but it's hard to bet against the only player with multiple games of 60 points. Uh, probably 50-something rebounds and five assists in NBA history. Dame time indeed. Here's your ESPN Daily. Things to care about. Long lost letters to Barry Sanders. Many of us wrote fan mail to our favorite athletes or celebs growing up. Britney Spears and Mia Hamm got more than a few letters from ya girl. But as far as I know, I never got a reply. I think the governor of Missouri did respond to me once when I reached out for my fifth grade state fair project. Or perhaps it was a senator. Either way, it was far less exciting than hearing back from Brit or Mia. No offense to him. A slew of die-hard Barry Sanders fans who reached out to the Detroit superstar after his retirement suffered the same replyless fa fate as my teeny bopper self. However, it wasn't because the most famous player in Lions history didn't care. Sanders was simply unaware the letters existed. That is, until about 150 of them were discovered inside a storage closet in the Lions practice facility in Allen Park, Michigan, by a team employee in 2018. The kids who wrote Sanders are now adults. Some of the senior citizens who wrote him are deceased. The Hall of Famer said all of them will get some sort of response. It's meaningful, Sanders said. It just shows what kind of career I was able to have and that I was able to connect with a lot of fans in that way. You know, I'm proud of that. I remember being a fan. I never wrote anyone, but I followed players religiously, so I kind of understand a little bit of that feeling behind the letters. It's a big honor. Here's a sample of the long-lost letters and their authors. <sighs> All eyes on spring college football. It's official on Tuesday. The, not all eyes. I mean, there are some people who still care about the fall football that's still going to happen. It's official. On Tuesday, the Big Ten and the Pac-12 voted to postpone all fall sports seasons. Oh, it was both of them. Including football, amid the coronavirus panic, with the hopes of playing in the spring. College football's mess of a situation is far from resolved, as there are other critical dominoes yet to fall. Namely, the ACC, Big 12, and SEC are, for now planning to proceed with the season. We could sit here and ruminate on college football's horrendous lack of central leadership, but I find it much more cathartic to deal in hypotheticals. So how does this all play out? Will student-athletes be allowed to transfer immediately to a team within a conference that is still playing, should they choose to do so? How would it be deemed safe for some conferences to play and not for others? Wouldn't playing a spring football season before the 2021 fall season be too hard on players' bodies? What about NFL draft implications? According to Bill Connolly, the spring season doesn't have to be as destined to fail as some might think. If the phrases conference jamboree and expanded college football playoffs spark your interest, you will want to read this. I think uh, the coach that they talked about yesterday, what he said was uh, a, a good point. I don't remember which coach it was. Maybe it was Harbaugh. I don't, I'm really not sure though, but anyway, he said something about how, uh, that playing football isn't what's gonna be dangerous, it's being in school and on campus, I mean, at all. So if these schools are deeming it, uh, all right to have school, then Football should be going on. I think it's silly to postpone. I think you can go on ahead by looking at what the professional teams have been doing. But whatever. Also, if you're still struggling to wrap your head around the news, you can read the college football world's reaction to the Big Ten and Pac-12 postponements as a reminder that you're far from alone in your disappointment. 2020, man. 2020. Surreal MLS is back tournament. I keep, I always, ah, that's such a stupid name for a tournament. MLS is back tournament. Surreal MLS is back tournament comes to fitting end. Good, it's over. Diego Valeri raised the MLS is back tournament trophy as he was joined by his teammates jumping and shouting in unison while donning masks that read champions. Off to the side, Portland Timbers owner Merritt Paulson engaged in a stream of fist pumps and clapping. 
There were no fans on hand to witness the celebration, none of the hoopla that would typically accompany such a joyful moment, but after spending about a month and a half in a bubble away from families and loved ones, Whew. It's hard to breathe. Um, away from families and loved ones, their exuberance was more than warranted. Uh, to emerge victorious in the MLS's back tournament required a special kind of endurance. A month ago, there were questions about whether MLS's back would even get off the ground as a wave of positive COVID-19 tests forced the withdrawal of football club football club Dallas and Nashville Soccer Club. Yet, the tournament survived, at times thrived, and the positive tests abated. The games featured the kind of chaos that is, see, that's what happens when you push ahead. This is doable, because, above all, it's not a fucking deadly disease, especially not for athletes. Young athletes. The games featured the kind of chaos that is the very oxygen of the league, and ultimately the Timbers emerged as deserving winners, capitalizing on their chances while subduing a, a game Orlando City side. Uh, okay. Although there has been some talk that Portland's trophy should come with an asterisk given the wild circumstances that surrounded it, I say it should be valued that much more. Well, I mean, why does including a little context on the year mean that anything's taken away I that, that that's the connotation of asterisks but this is unprecedented right this entire year everything that's being done this year is completely unprecedented so a little context in the rec in the in the record books and the history books would be fitting listen up MLB eyes postseason bubble Major League Baseball has already weathered multiple outbreaks of COVID-19, prompting the league to update its protocols after the integrity of its season was threatened. Now, the league is considering taking the same route as the NBA and NHL to ensure a successful postseason, playing inside a bubble. On today's episode of ESPN Daily Podcast, Jeff Passan brings us the latest on MLB's efforts to contain the coronavirus. Then, Passan shares his reporting on the breakout star of the, this MLB season. Excuse me. The San Diego Padres' Fernando Tatis Jr. Passan's res recent profile of Tatis Jr. for ESPN cover story took him to the Dominican Republic to tell the budding superstar's story. Things to watch. Son's intros will tug on your heartstrings. If it feels as if I'm, I've become a bit of a Devin Booker slash Phoenix Suns bubble bandwagoner, it's because I've become a bit of a Devin Booker Phoenix Suns bubble bandwagoner. But I promise you, this content is premium no matter where your NBA rooting interests lie. The Suns surprised players by having their family and friends introduce the starting lineup from home on Tuesday, and their reactions were priceless. I'm not crying, you're crying. Hmm... I'm going to go righty and just hit Bill Murray in the head seven times. The Chicago Cubs get extra points for creativity. The team decided to spice up batting practice by having players aim for cardboard cutouts of some of the city's most recognizable faces, including Bill Murray and Michael Jordan. If that MJ cutout didn't immediately make you think of the scene where Kevin McAllister makes Harry and Marv believe he's having a party in Home Alone, you're not a true fan. Of Michael Jordan or of Home Alone? Overheard. I think it's completely irresponsible. Reese Davis on the notion of having college football in the spring, followed by a season in the fall. Well, what if they delayed the fall season just a bit? Like, what if they pushed it just a bit, and then by the year after, things could get back to normal? Remember when? Never gets old. On this date in 2018... Wayne Rooney stole the ball and uncorked an absolute all-time great pass, leading to D.C. United's defeating Orlando on a goal in the waning seconds of stoppage time. A legend among us. What's on today? Bunch of stuff that we missed. Until next time, remember, 
If Britney Spears or Mia Hamm want to follow Barry Sanders' lead and send me a response to my ardent fan mail now, I would be open to it. Not that I'm bitter or anything. I'm just saying it's never too late to make amends. This has been your ESPN Daily for Wednesday, August 12th, 2020. Alrighty. <clears throat> Thank you, ESPN. Last of all, whoops, is Yahoo Sports Read and React. <clears throat> Will there be a college football playoff? And other burning questions. Oh, good question. Nebraska not happy with Big Ten canceling football. I'm sure. Suspensions handed down in base brawl. Astros coach gets 20 games. Wow. Manfred. Cardinals won't play 60 games. Well, what are they going to do? Deion Sanders leaving NFL Network to coach. Alrighty. Too much uncertainty by Jay Hart. Well, how to put this? This sucks. The Big Ten, uh, we're still talking about college football. Of course we are. The Big Ten pulled the plug on football this fall. The Pac-12 followed an hour later, and, well, we'll see if the Big 12, ACC, and SEC push forward. They've already issued statements saying they will. And that was yesterday, not today. There is no certainty, not even in cancellation. Jim Harbaugh, Nick Saban, and others made valid arguments that student-athletes might be better off under the guidance of a football program this fall versus walking around campus. Uh huh. It's a reasonable point, but it doesn't come with certainty. What is certain is that if something were to happen under their guidance, if an athlete got seriously ill or worse, they, the coach, the athletic program, the university, will be blamed. If they get sick walking around campus going to school, the university will still be blamed. Beyond the obvious potential for tragedy, no, there is not an obvious potential for tragedy because college students are not likely to die from COVID-19. Because most college students do not have life-threatening diseases already that would be exacerbated by COVID-19 that would be the cause of death. It's a PR nightmare and potential liability nightmare. This is ultimately what the decision to cancel fall sports came down to for the Big, Tw Big Ten and Pac-12 presidents. It doesn't matter that the risk of serious issues arising from twin... For 20-year-olds in good health is close to zero. <sighs> yes, it does. That their risk of dying in a car accident is statistically greater than dying of the coronavirus. Oh my god, you fucking... You're actually talking about this and you're still not <laughs> fucking getting it. It doesn't matter what protocols are put in place to keep student-athletes safe. Again, maybe even safer than they would be outside the athletic department. Even a sliver of uncertainty is too much for college athletics. Fucking cowards, man. Certainly the story of Brady Feeney, the Indiana offensive lineman who is reportedly dealing with potential heart issues after battling COVID-19, spooked the entire college landscape. One dude. One. Out of... How many college students are there? Millions? <clears throat> Feeney may be an outlier. A scientific understanding of any potential long-term effects of coronavirus is years away. But in the absence of certainty, do the Big Ten and Pac-12 want to test the odds? In the end, the answer is no. Why, why does this outlier have anything to do with potential long-term effects? Because if he's having potential heart issues now, that's not a long-term effect. <coughs> Wetzel. College football is as divided as the country itself. Bushnell. Do college sports need a vaccine before returning? No. Nobody needs a vaccine to this. Because, honestly, it's highly doubtful that there would be a long-term effective vaccine. You know what else is a coronavirus? The common cold, which is pretty fucking well known for not uh, having any type of cure or vaccine. Haynes, how players are bonding within the NBA's Orlando bubble. Well, that picture is not social distanced. The kicker. 
didn't they re read the sign? Remember, no feeding the bears. <clears throat> That's not safe. That's pretty stupid. Okay, that's it for Sundry Sports. Thank you, and goodbye.